What's up guys, welcome back to Deck Tech for Decks, and today our weekly budget build is the Swarm Lord. Now, people claim to call this guy boring, you know, the strategy's not that fun. But what I blame that on is the precon he got shoved in, right? This guy got dealt a raw hand. The precon wanted to cast big, massive Tyranids, and then when those Tyranids died, you gotta draw a card. That is a boring strategy. No, but this guy wants to be a Swarm deck. He wants to create a lot of creature tokens, and he wants to make sure all of those creature tokens enter with 1-1 counters, and then when we sacrifice those creature tokens, we're going to be drawing cards and getting additional value. So that's exactly the route we took. Additionally, he's one of those commanders that can abuse the persist mechanic just because of how you want to build the deck. When those persist creatures re-enter the battlefield and they get their plus one plus one counter put on them, it's going to go ahead and cancel everything out. That way you can just infinitely sack persist creatures. Now, that sounds pretty fun to me. So if this sounds like a strategy you're into and a deck tech you'd want to watch, let's get into it. The first thing we need to make sure is our creatures are entering in with those 1-1 counters on them. So Master Biomancer is going to be perfect in this deck, especially since we can put 1-1 counters on this guy and make him massive. Bloodsport Thrynax is very similar. He's going to buff our whole board, judging on the amount of 1-1 counters on him. And once he enters the battlefield, we have several ways to buff him up even more. Kazur and Shaman of the Great Hunt are pretty similar as well. Now whenever our creatures are dealing combat damage, we're going to be able to put counters on them. Additionally, Shaman of the Great Hunt can draw us a ton of cards. Master Chef, Renata, and Grumgully are as simple as it comes, but extremely useful in the deck. Creature enters the battlefield, throw a 1-1 counter on him. Path to Discovery also does this, but it also lets your creature explore. So this is going to keep all of the lands off of the top of our library, making it to where we're constantly drawing gas. Additionally, if we just have trash on top of our library, we can throw it into the graveyard. Ivy Lane Denison, a super solid card because the majority of our creatures are green. Additionally, we do run Herd Balith, so those two together go infinite, just adding to the insanity of this deck. Durable Handicraft and Zamat Guildmage will get those one on counters onto the creatures, but we will have to pay for it. Additionally, Zamat Guildmage is pretty solid because we can just draw cards by removing counters from our creatures. Retreat to Kazandu is pretty solid just for putting 1-1 counters on creatures. Additionally, it has amazing synergy with Fertilid and Mr. Gene Stealer over here. Now, whenever we activate their ability to put lands into the battlefield, we're just going to put that 1-1 counter back on them. So we essentially have a way to get all of our basic lands out of our library. Lastly, we have Tyranid Prime, which gives all of your creatures evolved. Now, whenever a bigger creature enters the battlefield, check to see if there's any smaller creatures, and if there is, put a 1-1 counter on all of those smaller creatures. We can't forget Rishgar. This guy's insane in the deck. Now, we're just tapping all of those creatures that have 1-1 counters on them for mana. Additionally, he just throws 1-1 counters on creatures. You gotta love cards that synergize with themselves. Alright guys, let's get into how we're creating these tokens. We have Termagant Swarm. This guy's really good in the deck and one of the very few Tyranids we run in the deck. We're gonna buff this guy up to the moon and sacrifice him for a bunch of little Tyranid spawns. Turvagon, this one's just better. We can just keep smashing face again and again, making this guy bigger and creating a bigger board state while we do it. Tyranid Harridan, this guy's insane and I think he's a little underrated. You just keep smashing face with this guy and he's going to double the amount of Tyranids you're hitting each turn, right? The first turn you got one, then you've got two, four, eight. He gets out of hand really quickly and since he has that ward ability, it makes him really hard to deal with if the enemy does not have a board wipe. Herd Balath, on top of being really solid in the deck, it does go infinite with Ivy Lane Denizen. Dragon Broodmother is an all-star in this deck. She's going to create a lot of tokens. Those tokens enter in with 1-1 counters on them. And those tokens can sacrifice other creatures with counters on them to draw cards. And then those tokens are going to get bigger because of that. She's honestly one of the best cards in the deck. Another all-star is the Locust God. Okay, whenever a creature dies, we draw a card and we'll create an insect token. Well, if those insect tokens are entering in with 1-1 counters on them, and we have a sack outlet on the battlefield, this guy will just go infinite, drawing our entire deck. Your commander will need to be on the battlefield, and it takes a little bit of setup, but honestly, once you pull it off, it feels amazing. Chasm Skulker, another card that has the potential to just end the game outright. If we get this guy big enough, sacrifice him, we're going to get a lot of tokens. Those tokens will enter in with 1-1 counters on him, and the blue player will be screwed. Now that we've got all those tokens, let's sacrifice them for some value to create more tokens half the time, right? Spawning Pit, a super solid sack outlet that's free to use, which is kind of what we're looking for, right? If you have to pay to sacrifice something, you better be getting a pretty good value off of it. So Spawning Pit synergizes with the deck because we can create more tokens with it and it's a free sack outlet. 
Tooth and Claw, another free sack outlet that's gonna let us create more tokens, right? We do have to sacrifice two tokens to get one, but remember we're drawing two cards when we do that because we're basically only sacrificing creatures with 1-1 counters on them. Feed the Pack, this card's insane mostly because of how big our commander is, right? The first time you cast him, he enters in as a 7-7. So imagine just sacrificing him to feed the pack. Now you've got seven 2-2s two that probably enter the battlefield as 3-3s three because we have some sort of effect that lets them enter in with an additional 1-1 one, one counter. Now, we cast our commander again next turn, sack him for 9, and we've got a huge army of wolves that will end the game. Goblin Bombardment, one of our best sack outlets because it can help us just close out the game if we do go infinite, right? So now we're pinging all of our opponents whenever we sacrifice one of those Persist triggers or one of those Locust God Insects. Greater Good, another solid card because honestly we do make some pretty massive creatures in this deck so sacrificing them for value is always a thumbs up. Evolutionary Leap, not our best sack outlet, but we will get a draw a card off of the creature we sacrifice. Additionally, we do get a creature card off of it too. So basically two cards for one for one mana, I'll take that. Let's go over the persist portion of the deck. We have Cauldron of Souls. This is a super solid card to dodge board wipes or double up on any of our ETBs. Additionally, it can just protect our best creatures and honestly generate an insane amount of value. Now let's get into those persist creatures. We have Airy Oofs. This one's super solid because any demon decks, dragon decks, angel decks, they're screwed, right? If you're running flyers, they're gonna be dead to this guy. As long as we can make sure he enters in with a 1-1 counter, we can sacrifice him an infinite amount of times, dealing damage to all of those flyers. Fury Stroke Giant. Now, this guy can be a game ender on his own. Imagine just having a huge board of tokens, casting this guy, and then all of those tokens can now tap to deal 2 damage to any target. That's honestly game ending. Additionally, like I said, with any persist trigger, as long as we can get a counter on it, boom, it's infinite sacks. River Kelpie. This guy can literally draw our deck, right? As long as he enters with a counter, sacrifice him to that Goblin Bombardment, and we're drawing our deck. Now might be a good time to mention we do run Elixir of Immortality, so we don't deck ourselves. Scuzzback Marauders. Again, we've got solid power on this guy. He's got Trample, and we can sack him an infinite amount of times. Finally, we have Woodfall Primus. This guy can get rid of literally everything except for creatures. Yes, literally lands too. So now your opponents have no lands, no artifacts, no enchantments. They've got their creatures, but you know nothing else and no way to deal with what you're doing. Let's get into the supporting cards of the deck. We have Winged Hive Tyrant. This is going to give all of our creatures haste and flying. Super good evasion and now they can just attack at will. Tyrant Guard is essentially a heroic intervention on a stick. Champion of Liam Holt is going to go ahead and make our board unblockable because it's not hard to get this girl massive. Genesis will just give us access to our graveyard. That way, any key pieces we use, notably Tyrant Guard, one of our key pieces, we can just get it back to our hand and cast it again. That's going to be super annoying. Elixir of Immortality. Again, we need this just to ensure we don't deck ourselves because that would kind of suck. Eternal Witness is also super solid in the deck. If we give her a persist, we can just keep bringing her back, bringing stuff back from our graveyard. Let's get into the ramp package, and it is pretty big because we're going to be casting a lot of pretty big spells. Pure Strain and Fertilid, now we have access to our library of basic lands, especially if we can just keep throwing 1-1 one -one counters on this guy, which is not going to be hard. Incubation Druid, we're probably never going to have to spend 5 mana to get a counter on her, but even if we do, she can just give us access to a ton of mana. Secure a Tri Builder, super solid, especially if we throw a counter on this guy, now we're drawing a card whenever we sack him. And then we run all 4 Signets because the Signets are just super solid early ramp. Cultivate Kodama's Reach, again, classics. Rampant Rejuvenator. I'm excited to see how big I can get this guy before I can sacrifice him to throw a ton of lands onto the battlefield. Additionally, we do run Traverse the Outlands, which works pretty similarly. Lastly, you know we're running that Soul Ring. Let's take a look at what's left of our card advantage. We have Bread for the Hunt, Reconnaissance Mission, and Biden of Thassa. Now whenever our creatures are dealing combat damage, we're drawing cards. Notably, this is going to fill our hand up really fast. Rishkar's Expertise, super solid because remember, our commander does enter in with 7 power. And then lastly, we have Removal. Xenanthrope. Super budget, if we cast it for over 5, we're drawing a card so it replaces itself as Flying in Ward, so honestly it's just kind of keyword soup that draws us a card and removes something when it enters the battlefield. 
Aberrant. A super solid card I've been shoving in more of my aggro decks. It's an attacker that gets rid of any of your problems. Who doesn't like that? Siren Storm Tamer. Not only is it super solid because we can just sacrifice it with a counter on it to draw a card, it's also going to be countering something that's targeting us. Beast Within. A solid card gets rid of any permanent that's, you know, giving you trouble. Still Bane Hydra. Remove a counter from it. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. This guy sticks onto the battlefield for a while and can be pretty annoying. Azuri's Predation. I'm excited for this because those beasts are all going to enter in with counters on them, right? And then we're going to fight and we're probably going to end up with most of those beasts surviving and now we have a massive board state. Colony Ambush. Just a super solid budget card that can get rid of creatures in a pinch. And that's going to do it for our weekly budget build, guys. Now, I'm really curious. If you guys were one of those people that thought maybe the Swarmlord was a boring commander, if this changed your mind, Denny. Because I think powering this deck up a little bit, you know, upping the budget, this guy could be completely unique and honestly pretty powerful. So I'm really excited to hear what you guys have to say in the comments. As always, I hope this helped you in your deck building endeavors, and I'll see you in the next one.